Hey everyone, welcome to James Grimes Just Solutions. We're keeping it low tech, we're keeping it casual. Uh, so we had a puzzle for you, which was a game show, and there was five prizes to be won. So there was the car, the diamonds, the goat, the bogeys, the poke in the eye. And if you ask for a prize, you get two of the other prizes. You want to win the car and the diamond. Which prizes do you ask for? So part of this is trying to work out what the rules mean. Uh, so let's go through the rules. For example, if you ask for a car, which I'm just going to write down like that on my piece of paper. If you ask for a car, you're going to win two of the other prizes. So let's just call those X and Y, that kind of thing. Uh, one of the rules was if you win a prize twice, then that cancels out. So you receive nothing. Let's say you get X twice, you receive nothing. And a quick consequence of what I've written down here is let's say I ask for the car twice. So I ask for the car twice. I'm going to win my prizes twice over. And those prizes are going to cancel out and give me zero. So asking for a car twice or any of the prizes like that will cancel out as well. So now we had a few examples that we need to use. Uh, so the first example was asking for a car and a goat. So if you ask for the car and you ask for the goat, uh, you got uh, bogeys and a poke in the eye, which I'm writing like whoop, that. There we go. And the second example, was asking for a car, asking for bogeys and a poke in the eye. And if you do that, you would receive a car, bogeys, poke in the eye, and you won the diamond as well, which I'm representing like that. So those are my two examples that I was given. So now how do we solve this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, the left-hand side of those last two examples, let's add them together and you can see the car will cancel out here. So let's add those together and we'll get asking for the goat, asking for the bogeys and asking for the poke in the eye on the left hand side. And now we're going to add the right hand sides together. Uh, you can see bogeys and poke in the eye will cancel out. So you're left with car and diamond. Hurrah! But the question asked for what would be the fewest terms that you could do this in. Uh, so there was one other piece of information that you can use. I said that every prize appeared twice. When you ask for something, there were two things that you could ask for that would result in the car and that would result in the diamond and so on. So if you ask for everything, let's say you ask for the car and you ask for the uh, diamond, and the goat. So we're asking for all five prizes. Ask for the bogeys. Ask for the poke in the eye. Uh, you're going to win everything twice. So you're asking for everything. Uh, so you'd win car twice, bogeys twice, so on. And that would all cancel out. So you would get on the right hand side here zero. If you asked for everything, you would receive nothing at all. So here's our last step. If we add the left hand sides together, you can see that the goats, bogeys, poke in the eye cancel out. So the left hand side will now be asking for the car and uh, asking for the diamond. And if we look at the right hand side and we add those together, we'll have car and diamond plus zero will be a car and a diamond. So what have we got here? Asking for a car and a diamond results in the car and the diamond. <laughs> How amusing. I guess there's only one other thing to sort out because I asked for you to win the car and the diamond in the fewest possible terms. And we've seen that asking for the car and asking for the diamond results in winning the car and the diamond. So is it possible to ask for one thing and win the car and the diamond? Well, it can't be asking for the car or asking for the diamond themselves because you're not allowed to win the prize when you ask for it itself. Uh, so let's try something else. Let's uh, say, uh, if you ask for the poke in the eye, can that win the car and the diamond? So if that was true, then you would see that if we ask for poke in the eye and got a car and diamond, well, adding that to the previous terms and adding that to the previous line here, we can see that asking for the goat would be 
equal to asking for the bogeys. So they have to be the same. That's so that everything, asking for everything equals zero. Right. Uh, but uh, we've got the car and the diamond appearing twice now. So asking for the goat can't involve the car and the diamond and it can't involve the goat. So that must mean asking for a goat, what's left? It must be bogeys and poking the eye. So you've worked out asking for the goat is bogeys and poking the eye. Ah, oh, but that can't equal asking for bogeys because it's got bogeys in it. Uh, and the same thing if I had another assumption here at the beginning. So you can see that you can't do it for asking with one thing. So the fewest possible terms is asking for the car and the diamond itself. So I should tell you a little bit about where I got this puzzle. Um, I actually saw it in a presentation once and you know, I, I found it amusing at the time. And so I kind of remembered it and then I had to go looking for it. And I found it in a new scientist in from 1981. It's a pretty obscure puzzle then, uh, submitted by Martin Hollis. And it had a completely different setup. It was about a king and a fairy godmother. Um, and it wasn't very 2020 when I looked at it again. Uh, but I remember the puzzle because it had the wonderful line, shiver my scepter, said the king. And I always remembered it as the puzzle with shiver my scepter in it. But I decided to rewrite the puzzle. Uh, so any problems with it uh, are down to me. Uh, for example, I maybe I should have made it more clear that the examples that the game show host gives are important to the puzzle. And so if I did it again, I'd probably say um, after the examples, the contestant says, aha, now I know what to ask for. You know, that line would tell you that the examples are important to the solution. So if you use this puzzle yourself, I would you know, put that line in. Uh, I thought it'd be nice to give a shout out to Miss Flowers Year 12 class who apparently tried to solve this puzzle on the whiteboard and uh, that confused the Year 7s who walked in afterwards why the word bogies was written all over the whiteboard, which was exactly the effect I was going for. Perfect. I did have other people asking me what does bogies mean? Is it nice? No, it's not. So it's time to go through your solution. So we had 1,286 submissions and most of them were right. Uh, we had 239 solutions saying the solution was uh, goats, bogies, poke in the eye, which is absolutely correct, but not in the fewest terms. And then 958 solutions. So really most of the solutions uh, went that extra step and got uh, asking for the car and diamond resulted in the car and the diamond. So the idea is kind of a, just an introduction to XOR addition. That's just the idea of adding a symbol twice cancels out. Um, looking at the solutions, most people didn't do it the way that I've just shown you, which was you know my way that I did it. Um, I'll say you know Gregory Hess did it my way. Um, maybe other people did it my way. Uh, but most people did not. I think most people did not use uh, this idea of adding all the prizes together, uh, cancelling out. Uh, without that, it became more of a, a logic puzzle. You had to work through the logic of it. Uh, so let's see what sort of solutions you had. Uh, so we had uh, Yano Keynes and Jonathan Mees. Uh, they sort of noticed that if you uh, ask for the car and you ask for the goat, then there must be an overlap here because we win two prizes here, bogeys and poke in the eye. So there must be an overlap. And then they kind of followed the logic that way, saying, well, there must be an overlap here, there must be an overlap there. And then they could work out the solutions from that. Uh, other people, such as uh, Lyndon Parker, Jonathan Jasper, uh, used diagrams with arrows. Uh, and then they noticed that there were actually two valid solutions, which is absolutely true. There are two valid solutions for this, although both of the valid solutions uh, result in the same answer. Car and a diamond gives you a car and a diamond. Or asking for a goat, bogeys and poke in the eye results in car and a diamond. So they both gave you the same answer. But there are two valid solutions to do this. Uh, Jonathan also asks, uh, what if this diagram was non-transitive? Uh, kind of like rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, if you know that game. Uh, so that's a question to leave you with. Uh, 
Others, many others, uh, did this in the form of a table. So uh, this example here is from Tim Enchanter. Uh, so using a table, uh, saying yes and no uh, for when you uh, win the prize or don't win the prize. And in the same way, discovered that there were two solutions for that. Uh, in fact, you can get one solution from the other by reversing the roles or swapping the roles of uh, bogeys and poking the eye. Uh, so if you do that, you actually get the other solution. Another way of thinking of these tables is as a matrix. You can think of it as a matrix with ones and zeros, in which case asking for a prize becomes a, a sequence of ones and zeros. You could think of it as a binary number. But then there is this idea of XOR addition. So X or addition, so the two ones would cancel out and give you a zero. Um, and the important thing about these matrices or this table, if you did it that way, is that each row and each column contains two ones or two yes answers. Other viewers did computer searches, Python scripts, that sort of thing, and uh, many answers like that. But uh, I'll mention Kevin Kenny, who searched uh, the whole 2 to the power 25 possible matrices and then added in conditions, which narrowed down the search. Every condition you add narrows down the search a little bit more. And then they ended up with uh, two possible solutions at the end. I did see uh, a message from one viewer who did a computer search and then uh, got the answer uh, asking for the car and diamond results in the car and diamond and thought that they had got it wrong. Uh, so that's pretty much it for all the possible ways of solving this. Um, I'll give an honourable mention to Perfax's uh, presentation of the puzzle in Lego, which I very much enjoyed. Thank you very much for that. But I think those are all the possible solutions that I got. So uh, that's all from me and I'll see you next time. Oh, there is one other thing to add. Um, I've got something to plug, which I'm not very comfortable with doing, but you know, I'll give it a go. Uh, so this weekend, uh, me and Katie Steckles, you might know from Number File and YouTube stuff, uh, we're doing a virtual maths retreat for maths loving teenagers. Uh, so on this weekend, that's Saturday the 28th, Sunday the 29th of November 2020, uh, we're doing this event online. Uh, we've got a session in the morning for younger teenagers, uh, which is all sold out. Uh, but we have sessions in the afternoon uh, for the older teenagers, which is uh, 14 to 16 year old and that's not sold out uh, so if that's you and you're you want to do some maths at the weekend with me and Katie Steckles um, have a look at jamesgrime.com slash virtual maths retreat it's 35 pounds um, people from other countries are welcome if time zones work out for you and if you're seeing this after November 2020 then it's happened already but maybe you could check it out and see if I'm doing it again there you go. Uh, I did it. I did a plug. All right. That's the end. Bye.